Hello, my name is Steve Hayes. I'm with Allsafe Industries, a veteran-owned small business, providing technical safety equipment to industry, first responders, and our military. This video series will discuss multi-gas instruments available from Allsafe Industries. The idea here is to provide a brief side-by-side -side comparison to show you the features and benefits that you might find useful in your next multi-gas instrument. If this video helps you in any way, we would appreciate some help from you. A simple thing you can do is to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It will help more people just like you find this video. An even better thing that you can do is to be our customer. We think you'll appreciate our quick customer service and the attention to detail that you're about to see in this video. We offer multiple brands and we provide service and training. Thank you in advance for whatever you decide to do. Before we begin, let's talk about some basics. First, all the various names that we use to talk about gas detection, or gas meters, or gas instruments, or sniffers, any sort of device that's gonna help to test the air that you're about to breathe or work in to ensure your safety. The basic categories of gas detection are single gas meters, four gas meters, and multi-gas meters. A single gas meter is just that. It's designed for one sensor to detect one type of gas or a family of gases like combustible gases or volatile organic compounds. Four gas meters are by far the most popular choice and utilize three or four sensors to measure the gases that you would most likely encounter in a confined space. They are oxygen, flammables or combustible gases, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen sulfide. Some manufacturers use a combination COH2S sensor to keep the meter small and affordable. You can configure your four gas meter for use with other sensors, but these four are the most widely used. And finally, multi-gas instruments. These meters use between four and seven sensors, depending on the brand, to detect all the gases simultaneously. It is the most advanced out of the ones that we've discussed and the topic of this video series. Let's begin. First, some background. In the late 1990s, the first multi-gas instrument was introduced by combining a four gas meter with a PID sensor, a photo ionization detector. I'm referring to the Multi-Ray by Ray Systems. Because it was first to market, it quickly became the most popular multi-gas instrument available, and now all manufacturers have a multi-gas instrument in their lineup. So in this video series, we'll use the Multi-Ray as the basis for comparison to the other multi-gas instruments that are available from Allsafe Industries. In this video series, we'll discuss the following points for each meter, sensor options, sampling options, power options, including runtime, the user interface, including the display and the buttons and the different automatic prompts that you might see when you're using the meter, bump tests and calibration options available, software options on how to configure your meter or download data, sharing options. How would you get those readings from your screen on your meter to a computer screen or a cell phone nearby? And finally, unique features between the two different meters that we're going to compare. Let's begin. In this multi-gas comparison video, we're going to compare the Multi-Ray from Honeywell to the BW Ultra, also from Honeywell. Let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, let's talk about sensor options. So in the Multi-Ray from Honeywell, we have five different sensor slots measuring up to six different gases. That's because we have the ability to use a COH2S combination sensor. There are 25 different sensors to choose from from Honeywell for the multi-ray, and they include electrochemical sensors for your oxygen and your toxic gas sensors, your catalytic bead LEL sensor, your photo ionization detector sensor, and we have four different PID lamp options for the PID sensor in the various multi-rays, and then infrared sensors to measure flammables and carbon dioxide. Compare that to the BW Ultra, 
We have five sensor slots measuring up to five gases, and we can choose from 16 different sensors, including electrochemical, again, for oxygen and toxics, L catalytic bead LEL sensor, a photoionization detector sensor, and an IR sensor. When we talk about our sampling options, the multi-ray can be purchased as either a diffusion instrument in a multi-ray light, or the other models are pumped versions and the multi-ray can pull through 100 feet of tubing. The Honeywell BW Ultra has a pump module built in and can draw through 75 feet of tubing. For power options, the multi-ray can use an alkaline battery pack or a rechargeable lithium ion battery. The standard battery pack runs 12 hours, or you could purchase the extended runtime battery for a total runtime of 18 hours. The BW Ultra is a rechargeable battery only and has 18 hours of runtime unless you have a PID or an IR sensor installed and then your runtime is reduced to 14 hours. For your user interface options, first the multi-ray is 31 ounces. This will by far be the heaviest meter in our comparison video series. It has the classic three button interface, your power button, and then a yes plus and a no minus button. It has a monochrome display and you can program the instrument to do automatic prompts for fresher calibration, bump checks, and calibrations. In comparison, the BW Ultra weighs only 14.5 ounces and has one button operation. It has a high contrast dot matrix display, which we'll see here in a minute, and you will be prompted to stall out the pump during the warm-up sequence. Both instruments can be bump checked or calibrated through onboard menus on screen or through calibration stations, the Autoray 2 for the multi-ray or the IntelliDox for the BW. For software options, you have both paid and free software options for the multi-ray. If you wanted to pay the subscription and you had a wireless multi-ray, you can share that data to other locations, other computer screens. Uh, same with the BW Ultra, same software actually. Wireless subscription for real-time readings and then a free program for data and programming options. And then again, for sharing options, the multi-ray uses a mesh radio card. So a mesh radio card built into the multi-ray can then communicate with other mesh radios to share that information to other screens. For the BW Ultra, we have Bluetooth capability. The Bluetooth would be able to communicate to a Honeywell app you would install on your cell phone, and then we would be able to use the features of your cell phone to share that data to other screens. And then finally, some of the uniques that we'll talk about here with the comparison between the Multi-Ray and the BW Ultra. Uh, the uniques on the Multi-Ray are that we have three different versions available, a light, a regular Multi-Ray, and a Multi-Ray Pro. The Pro can give you the ability for a part per billion range PID sensor and or a gamma radiation sensor. The unique thing about the BW Ultra is the one button operation. So if you need a simple gas detection instrument, it doesn't get better than a meter that only has one button. Let's go ahead and power up both meters and watch the warm up sequence for each one just to get a comparison here. When the multi-rate beeps, you're done pressing the power button, you have a 3, 2, 1 countdown on the Ultra, and then you'll hear some sounds from the speaker on that instrument to let you know that the meter is up and running. Each will go through a self-test warm-up sequence. You'll get various pages of information. Over here, we just say self-test so far. And here is my prompt on my BW Ultra. So as I mentioned, it's going to prompt us to do a pump test by blocking the inlet. So you just use your finger to block the inlet. Now it says unblock, pump test passed. So that's what we want to see. Now we know that our pump is working properly and it will complete the warm up sequence. Tells me my LEL sensor, my PID sensor correction factors. It's running through my alarm limits, my time weighted averages, my short term exposure limits for my toxic sensors. 
There's my low alarms for all five sensors. Here's my high alarm for all five sensors. It did a quick sensor check and it's showing that they all pass that self test. And then it's giving me the option to start auto zero, fresh air environment is required. And I would need to press and hold the button to zero the sensors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Keep holding through the countdown, three, two, one. And now it just zeroed out all the sensors. You can see I've got a little negative reading here, but that just cleared to zero. Zeroing has passed. And now the meter is gonna power on. So while I was focused on the Ultra, you see that the Multi-Ray is finishing its warm-up sequence. It goes through quite a bit of data as you're doing that warm-up to tell you all the different sensors that are installed, their serial numbers, their expiration dates, their alarm set points. Now I'm seeing information about my data logging, some of my parameters, and now my Multi-Ray has finally reached its first automatic prompt do I want to do a fresh air calibration? And I can either say start or quit. I don't have to do a fresh air calibration. I could hit quit and start using the instrument. But personal preference for me, I like to do a fresh air calibration as long as I'm in fresh air. So I'm going to hit the start button and you'll see that that's a 60 second countdown. While this is doing its fresh air calibration, we'll look back over here to the BW Ultra. And you can see, again, I just have the one button operation. Pressing the button one press at a time doesn't really do anything. It's when you press and hold that I could start the power down sequence. If I do a double tap, now I get some additional menus. I can use my C information menu, start bump test, zero sensors, start calibration, or exit. And by pressing the button one press at a time, I can toggle through these different menu choices. When I want to select whatever menu is highlighted, I would press and hold. So three, two, one countdown to see the information screens. And I see my peak readings, my stale readings, my time weighted average readings. I can reset all my readings if my process calls for that. It tells me when my next calibration is due on all the sensors. It reminds me what my correction factors are set to for both the LEL and the PID sensors. And then tells me my low alarms, my high alarms, my still set points, and my time weighted average set points, my firmware, hardware, serial number of the instrument. And then again, this is a Bluetooth instrument. If I want to pair this to the app on my phone, this is my pairing code. And then back to the main display. You can see over here, my multi-ray has completed its warm-up. And so I can use my arrow button here to toggle through the pages of information on my multi-ray. My first is my peak reading screen. That's the highest reading since I've had the meter turned on my min reading screen, which is the lowest reading since I've had the meter turned on. Here's my short-term exposure limits. Here's my time-weighted averages. Here's my date and my time. Here's my temperature. Uh, Ray Systems originally with the multi-ray liked having a temperature readout because your PID is a glass lamp, so you'd like the instrument to be roughly the same operating temperature as the gases that you're measuring. I have my battery type screen, what my voltage is now and what it will be when it's time to shut down. Current runtime, previous runtime. My VOC gas status, very important screen. This is reminding me that I've calibrated isobutylene. My measurement gas is isobutylene, therefore my correction factors are one. Same with the LEL sensor. LEL gas status, calibration gas is methane, measurement gas is methane, therefore my correction factor is a one. And then last but not least, the intercommunications mode on the multi-ray. If I say yes to this, you'll see that I have choices. I can communicate with a computer that I would use connecting my travel charger and a cable from the travel charger to my PC, or 
I can install my multi-ray in an auto ray 2 and be able to perform bump checks and calibrations. If I select either of those, the meter will pause while I'm doing those maintenance functions. And then when I'm finished, I can select exit. It takes me back to that last screen. And if I press the arrow button one more time, I'm back to the regular display screen showing my gas detection readings. So let's do this. Let's do a quick test of these instruments just to compare the pump draw and the response of the PID sensor. I'm just gonna use a simple alcohol wipe. I have 12 feet of tubing here that I'm gonna to attach to the top of my multi-ray. That's a lure fitting, so make sure that fitting is nice and snug so you don't get any air diluting your gas detection sample. Same thing for my BW Ultra. It is a lure fitting, so make sure you get a good snug fit onto the pump inlet. And then I'm just going to use a simple alcohol wipe, and I'm going to set a timer so we can see the reaction time of the instrument once I expose it to the wipe. So grab the ends of my tubing. Again, both of these are 12 feet sections of tubing. So I'm gonna tear this open, hit my timer, and start my test. So you can see both meters responded in about 12 to 15 seconds, which is exactly right. My multi-ray is already recovering and out of alarm now. My BW Ultra taking a little bit longer time and got a much higher reading. So now it's in the low alarms. And I believe the set point is 50 ppm. So as soon as that drops down, we'll be able to silence these alarms. And there we go. So a little, just slightly longer to react and slightly longer to recover. Uh, you can see my multi-ray is already down in single digits VOC and my BW Ultra is about 30 part per million now and continuing to drop down. So very similar uh, pump draw, a little faster on the multi-ray than on the BW Ultra, but you never want to get into a hurry when you're doing gas detection, so always be slow and methodical when you're taking readings either in a confined space or you're trying to detect the presence of toxic gases. So this completes the comparison of the multi-ray from Honeywell with the BW Ultra from Honeywell. For more details, I would encourage you to visit the Allsafe Industries website. At the top of the page, click Resources, and then scroll to the Gas Detection Instruments section and then click the gas meter comparison chart. Here you'll find information organized by meter type with links for each so that you can do some price comparisons on your own. Of course, please call us to answer any questions you might have, to schedule a virtual demonstration, or to request a quote. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, call our toll-free number, or fill out a contact form on our website. We're here to serve you and would appreciate having you as a customer. Thank you.